following God? Are we really his friends and his servants as we proclaim to be? We have to ask ourselves that every day and repent of being money lovers every day and understand the horrific implications that we have, uh, have inflicted upon ourselves over the ages, man, millennia, thousands of years, this crap. God has got to be just at his wit's end, man, and that's exactly the way it's foretold. We were going to squander the grace that Christ gave us and that he was going to fill his cup with the fury of his indignation. There was never going to be another ransom to be paid. Jesus Christ, his dying and death and resurrection is the final price, the final propitiation that was ever going to be paid for our lost and our deranged souls. So that's it, man. That's it, man. Accept that. Accept that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Charity, love covers a multitude of sins. All this stuff, I, I'm not, this is not original thoughts. This is stuff I plagiarized from scripture. I'm sharing. It's the best stuff I got. That's it, man. So, you know, God is able, you know, to, to give us grace to get through another day and actually enjoy it to some degree when we don't feel worthy or deserving of it. We, we wonder why we weren't burned up in the fire, okay? I, I'm no less deserving. I, I'm a sinner. Why not me, Lord? And a lot everybody's asking themselves that. I mean, it's heavy duty, man. It's thick. It's in the air. That You know, we're a family. We're a community. People are looking out for other people because they put themselves in that shoe. They, it's not hard to empathize when you're a human being with a soul and a conscience, you have natural empathy, God-given, instinctual. And we've got to have that out all the time and not just in, an, in these emergency situations. We've got to be those people all the time. That's what God's saying to me, to me, and that's what he's saying to this community is that let's not stop here, man. Let's firmly let's make sure everybody's taken care of. Okay, the criminals will be taken care of, so we don't have to worry about the criminals. Let's take care of those non-criminals. Okay? I've done my own research, folks. It's not a housing shortage. It's affordable housing shortage. Back in, in, in 2006, I did the research. You could house every homeless man, woman, and child in America. I still have 90% of the vacant available housing left over, either for rent or for sale. And that's not including hotels and motels. <laughs> so nobody can tell me. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, using the frog being dumped into the water to be boiled slowly so it is lulled rather than startled and hopping out allegory. We've all heard of the allegory of the frog in the pot of water. Americans at large, our nation's people, were dumped into the pot in 1963 at the assassination of JFK. Quote, they, those in control of moving the, quote, Overton window, look up any of these terms you haven't heard, Okay, and you'll understand it's real, man. This gaslighting business, these people are scientific about this diabolism. It's like a religion to these people, and it knows no bounds. And if we're, we've always been behind, you know, we're, 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 we're a step behind these people constantly. We've got to get a step ahead of these people. So, let me start this sentence again. So... The assassin of JFK, they, those in control of moving this Overton window, moved it slowly at first, but now we have reached a fevered boil. We're cooked as a nation, and the sooner we admit it, the better. Kind of like jumping off that ship that's going to sink and drag all of us down. Yeah, and there's been points when they've turned the heat up on us. You know, just let's get this job done. And, um, 
you know, once they figured we're really deeply in their trance with the love of money and, uh, you know, complying to their wishes, you know, you were under my spell like a hypnotist or something, then those were periods when they turned up the heat like Bill Clinton gets Slick Willie getting rid of the Glass-Steagall Act and, and uh, they, they bail out of 08 that it led up to and, you know, of course, getting off the gold standard. The assassination of JFK, that was a big one. That's when they got us in the pot, in my estimation. Then they had to move real slowly from there. They couldn't, you know, startle the frog. And if they started raising our cost of living tax too soon, debasing our currency, same thing, one and the same, just like a scale. Worth of your currency goes goes down as your currency is debased. So the more they debase the currency, the worth of your currency goes down. You understand? It's just the way it, it you know. So it's just... Um, you know, that's how we've been cooked. He keeps slowly raised the cost of living tax. But he really bumped it up with that bailout of 08 that Slick Willie caused. Uh, your housing dollars, in other words, went through the floor at that time. and No basis for appraisals anymore. It's just whatever the market would bear, taking bids and all this, and lenders lending utterly recklessly, profound with profound recklessness, dumping money on us, debasing our housing dollars. And that led to a chain reaction. Of course, we've got to see inflation in other parts because when your rent and mortgage goes up, you need more money. So your numbers have to go up. So whatever you do, whatever goods and services you offer the public, um, then you've got to raise your price. Otherwise, you fall behind. It's just simple math. Everybody knows. Duh. Right? So let's not play stupid. Let's not be intellectually dishonest here. We know how it works, how we've been boiled, how we're cooked now. Everyone that is in their right mind invariably have mental issues. It comes from contending with a wholly insane world system. That is, the beast system. It's upon us. Everybody's talking about the chips. This is just the last stage of talking about plant people with chips. So, you know, my recommendation, don't get a chip. It's like You're not going to get marked by the beast saying, I'm that much devoted to the establishment. I have that much faith in the establishment. I trust it that much. No, don't do it. No, this is why I say, man, there's, you know, atheism is for the birds, man. I believe the final changing of the guard on planet Earth regarding humankind, human civilization, will take place through a slow burn process as a light of truth sweeps through our race, much like a sieve that separates gold from much, from, I didn't write this properly. It, well, it separates, everybody knows, it's separating the gold from the stuff that's not gold. The junk that you don't want. I forgot there's a term for it that I, um, I didn't bother to look up here. So all that's left is gold and clean and pure. The end of the establishment. The beginning of a viable reality. One based upon righteousness, justice, and fairness for all its inhabitants. So I hope you get the point that um, this is happening. It's, I think we're in the process that, you know, God, the, the spirit of truth, the light of truth is sweeping through us. And like leaven in the dough, man, uh, don't resist it. Let the let it sweep through you. Because those that, that it doesn't sweep through, they're the ones that are going to be going to that Dante's Inferno, Ninth Circles of Hell place. So let the goodness of God cleanse you. Like the refiner's fire has been described, like silver being refined. Our souls are going to be. Our essence is going to be. Our, our beings are going to be. If humanity is allowed to travel a gradual path to true freedom, that is absolute and universal freedom, then the universal force for good, that is to say the Almighty Creator God, will be forced to be abrupt. That is the predication the prophecy in scripture. Yeah, it's not because God wants to be abrupt, it's because we're forcing his hand. Why believing in the existence of an almighty creator God is not only logical, but in fact scientific. Mathematics is a perfect quintessential example of a provable science. It is achieved through the wholly invisible process of thought, of imagination, and can be manifested on the physical plane through eyesight, one more example of a miraculous, mysterious scientific wonder. Basically, God is very, very real. If anything is real, and your ability to conceive, to imagine, to think, to solve, a mathematical equation is the best evidence of a creator, a master designer, a God Almighty. 
Those who profess a belief, a faith, a trust in Jesus should take to heart a particular teaching. To paraphrase <coughs> and condense a quote, whatsoever you do, we do, or fail to do for the least of these, we do or fail to do for him. So who do we consider as the least of men? Are you 